A triple fivers, this is the Spyderco Shaman. A full size folder from Spyderco coming in at a total length of eight inches with three inches of actual uh, cutting length in the blade. It's a compression lock folder, which is of course Spyderco's proprietary and very secure lock. Uh, comes with uh, really handsome rounded G10 scales, a double choil, which I like, and a, a, a beefy S30V blade made all in Golden, Colorado, so a USA made blade. So, uh, as you might guess, this design has received a lot of praise. But I'm gonna be honest with you here, there are a couple things about this knife that for me are fatal flaws. There are design features that are not just a matter of fit and finish, but actual uh, intrinsic to the design of this knife that to me just uh, just don't make it my top choice in the big folder category. And so in this review, just to show that I'm uh, impartial about this knife, I am going to cover all the things that are good about this knife uh, and all the reasons why it's a, a solid buy if you buy it. I'm not saying it's a bad knife to purchase. But then I'm going to talk about the things that to me are... Uh, unsolvable design problems. And then also I'm going to talk about a second thing, which is uh, I think that for the price, the materials that you get for this knife, and actually the style of knife that it is, is just not ideal. So it's a bit of a contrarian review, sorry if you're a big Shaman fan and you're just uh, tuning in to see uh, what someone else thinks. Uh, I think there are better knives available from Spyderco or elsewhere if you're looking for a big heavy use folder. So that will be the second half of the video after I cover what's good about the knife. Okay, so let's get started by talking about some of the things that I do actually like about the Spyderco Shaman. It's not all hate. There are a number of quality aspects of this knife, and, uh, and I want to get into it right now. First of all, uh, I definitely appreciate the rounded G10 handle. It is uh, beautifully chamfered uh, and smoothed out. Um, it is a, a really sharp looking G10. Uh, I prefer smooth G10 on this compared to like say the Paramilitary 2 where it's rougher. Um, it stays in your pocket just as well as a rougher G10 and is uh, definitely easier and more comfortable on your hands. Uh, some guys have complained that it could have been uh, chamfered in the, in the middle of the scales or the, on the inside of the scales. And uh, while I think that would have been nice, it, it is true that this kind of material you can easily hit with some sandpaper and take uh, whatever uh, edginess off uh, of that G10 uh, very quickly. I also like the finishing on this S30V blade. It has a, a gorgeous stonewash finish. I wish Spyderco would just make this finish proprietary to all of their USA made knives. I definitely prefer this to the satin grind finish that you see on your standard paramilitaries. I also love that they, they stonewash the pocket clip as well as the blade. That's a really great touch. As I mentioned, the ergonomics on this knife are good when the knife is deployed. It's got a double choil that's very handsome. As you know, this knife is just a scaled up native four and it uh, is really especially true in the lines of the knife as well as just in the handle shape and then they rounded it out. So I, I like the G10 handles. I like how they're smoothed out. I like the stone washing on the blade. Uh, it has a compression lock, but there's something really weird about this compression lock that I don't like. And it is of course that the guard on the front choil, that front guard protrudes so much that when you're closing the lock, when you're closing the lock on your fingers, it's going to hit the tip of your finger. It looks basically like a tiny flipper. A tiny flipper uh, right in the middle of the compression lock. The thing is about compression locks is the whole fun of it is being able to break this knife in enough so that you can quickly close it. And this one is not broken in enough to quickly close. Uh, it's a brand new knife basically right out of the box. But once these Foster bronze washers in this knife are broken in, this thing will slap close really nicely. Now the problem is, is that um, the most fun part of the knife is impeded by the fact that this choil hits your finger. So that is really, um, I can't say, it's just a design flop, plain and simple. Uh, you, the exact place where your finger is resting is basically bopped by this little front choil guard. And um, 
I find it really annoying. And it's actually uncomfortable and distracting if you're in the middle of a work environment and you need to close your knife and put it away quickly. It's distracting to get your finger whacked like that every single time. Another kind of weird thing about this is how it's sort of a front flipper. Uh, there's just some sort of excess steel on this knife that allows you to kind of open it like this, uh, which I just, uh, I don't see why it has to be that way. It's um, just, uh, it would have been nice to have this rounded out like you see on so many other spider knives rather than having this extra tang here. Now materials are another area that I just feel like they could have done a better job. Uh, this is G10. I'm not going to complain about the rounded G10. I think a little bit too much hype has surrounded the G10. I mean, you can get a smooth G10 from your no-name Walmart knife every day of the week, and it's not like um, a great added value to do that. The other thing that is disappointing me about this for sure is this S30V steel. And the thing about S30V and Spyderco knives is that it's generally heat treated pretty hard in my experience. So I've had a bunch of S30V Spydercos, especially paramilitary twos, and um, I just find it kind of chippy. Uh, and I'm not a metallurgy expert and I haven't done a bazillion rope cut tests or anything like that, but my anecdotal experience is S30V is not my favorite steel, especially on uh, thinly edged knives like spider cone knives, which kind of brings me into another topic. One fundamental thing that just threw me off when I was reviewing the Shaman is the fact that this is sort of trying to be a big, hard using knife and it's sort of pitched that way. But the thing is, is that if you're like truly using this kind of knife for hard use, like prying or cutting really filthy rope or something like that, you're gonna want a blade that's even more substantial than the leaf shaped blade. And there are better blades out there. Like for example, one that I have in my collection is the Benchmade 940. The Benchmade 940 is just simply a stouter blade style than the Shaman. And it has practically the same um, actual edge uh, compared to the Shaman, even though it's a fraction of the weight, even the standard 940. And, uh, and so to have uh, a more stout blade with equal cutting performance in a much smaller and lightweight size, it means you're gonna have the opportunity to carry other tools with you more easily, which if you're really hard using, which I'm not typically really hard using, um, if you really are hard using, it is going to be important for you to have access to other tools like your Leatherman or flashlights uh, or pry tools actually. Uh, these are all things that if you're a real hard user, you're not gonna typically just be using your knife. And then of course, if the Benchmade isn't hardcore enough, then you have all of the cold steel knives with CTS-XHP, which is, in my opinion, a better hard-use steel than S30V. And also those knives are ground in a way that's going to be more suitable for hard use. Another thing that is seriously ridiculous about this knife is the weight. We're talking 5.2 ounces. I don't know how to put it nicely. This thing is just a hog in the pocket. Uh, even with its uh, rounded shape, it's heavy. And a lot of it is attributed to things that I don't think are, are very uh, handsome anyway. It's got this big stainless steel backspace which some you know reviewers said well it balances the knife out or something well maybe the whole knife is just too heavy then there are uh, other knives that are, are significantly cheaper that i feel like handle balance and weight a lot better and so i want to talk about a knife that is a surprisingly cheap and similar alternative to the shaman and that is the spider core resilience and yes this spider core resilience doesn't have nearly as good as steel uh, it's quite a bit longer blade um, and it's made in China, so it's not as similar of a knife as as probably some other spider codes. Like if I had if I had a Manix 2XL with a, a better steel, that would be a better comparison to the Shaman directly. But here's a thought: you could buy three of these resiliences for the price of one of these shamans easily, no problem. And then you could have one resilience, that's your slicer and you keep the edge really fresh. You have one resilience, which is your beater, and you use that one to do your stupid prying and things that you shouldn't be doing with a folding knife. And you have another one just as a backup for when you lose these knives because these um, tri-weight clips are about as sturdy as they come from Spyderco, but, but it's not immune to bending, and especially if you're in a really intense work environment, it's very possible that you could uh, accidentally you know, bend a clip and lose a knife uh, on, a, on a busy day. And so for me, 
the uh, sort of surprising alternative that I have in my collection that I was like, oh, I think I actually like this cheap knife better than this expensive knife. It's the Spyderco Resilience. Putting the Resilience down on the table with some other knives will help you illustrate my point that there are just some other options that are out there. Here it is next to the Delica 4 just for a size comparison. And as you can see, this is really an oversized knife. Even though you're really only looking at maybe about an inch more of cutting performance off of the Delica, which is, by the way, a much slicier knife. So if you don't want a knife, why don't you buy something humongous like this Benchmade Adamus, which before you kill me in the comments, I, I did purchase the knife this way. And uh, it has a decent edge on it as far as, as far as that goes. But if you actually want a slicer, well then buy a knife that has actually a lot more cutting length on the blade, like the Resilience, and this knife is a lot lighter. So to me, the Resilience, uh, even though obviously it's not gonna hold an edge as well with this 8CR 13 MOV steel compared to the S30V steel, um, is a much more compelling option. But if you want like a nice hard user, I would say get a ZT. This is the ZT0470. Again, an equal amount of cutting performance compared to the Spyderco. Actually a much nicer knife and really not that huge of a price difference because now we're creeping towards 200 bucks for the price of the standard Shaman. And uh, this ZT is a bit more expensive. Or, you know, here's another interesting thought. Why don't you buy a Spyderco that's unabashedly weird? like the Spidey Chef, which is lighter, it's gonna have much better cutting performance, comparatively speaking, and is gonna carry a lot better. Granted, I could probably replace this Spidey Chef with like a Paramilitary 2 or a Manix 2 with a really good steel like S110V, and um, it'd be a more apt comparison. But the point is, I think there are Spydercos that are sort of more true to what defines Spyderco as a slicey knife brand, and uh, I would go with those. Of course, you've got brands like Benjamin, which are, are better known as sort of the, the working class type of knives. And the 940, again, has, has equal cutting performance or better in hard use situations compared to this big Shaman. So again, final conclusions. I think that the Shaman is not a bad release from Spyderco, not one that's like dangerous or so bizarre that it deserves to be discontinued immediately. But I don't think it's the instant future classic in its current iteration that people are claiming it to be. The truth is, is that this knife has, uh, to me, some pretty weird aspects to it. Uh, some, some things that did not seem to be fully thought through. Uh, you need to fix this uh, front guard uh, tab. You need to find a better solution than this very uneven backspacer. Uh, and you need to think about the value that you're actually getting in this knife, relatively speaking. Again, keep in mind, you can get three resiliences with better, better cutting performance and uh, uh, easier maintenance uh, compared to, to this knife. And uh, the only thing you're really getting is some, some fancy scales and a compression lock, which, um, you know, if you really care about uh, the compression lock, get a paramilitary two or get a Manix if you care about um, uh, your weight at all because this thing is just a total hog. So anyway, uh, my honest take on the Spyderco Shaman, I know that it's highly recommended in some other knife reviews. To me, it is um, not best of class, not best of class. If I was looking for just a plain old hard use folder, I would get something from Cold Steel uh, or from Benchmade. And if I was looking for a Spyderco that was larger, I would look at uh, one of the many other interesting offerings that equal uh, or surpass this knife in cutting performance, say the Spidey Chef, the Paramilitary 2, the Manix 2, uh, or heck, even the Resilience as a budget choice, which again, I, I am uh, kind of um, a fan of the Resilience as an underdog choice here. I mean, it's just such a, 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 a honking big blade for 50 bucks. Uh, it's lighter weight than the Shaman. It's got pillar construction. Just an overall interesting alternative, overlooked alternative. Maybe you'll see a review of this knife standing alone. Uh, I just don't see any obvious flaws with this knife straight away, uh, which is something that I do see when I am checking out the Shaman. Guys, this is the first knife you're gonna see me review from the Apex Passaround group, which is basically a group of knife 
uh, YouTubers and Instagrammers who are sharing some knives for review. I got the Shaman to borrow for basically two weeks and it was enough for me to realize some of the obvious flaws. Obviously in terms of long-term performance or break-in, I wasn't able to report on that. This knife was provided to the Apex Knife Pass Around by Valtac, which is another knife vendor that is selling Spydercos. And uh, that's great that they provided that knife. I will include a link to the knife down below. Um, just want to give you a heads up that it's currently sold out. I do expect the Shaman to come back into stock and you should be able to buy it at this link. Uh, and I'd like to thank Valtech for providing this knife to the Apex um, Pass Around group for review. Um, guys, let me know what you think of the Spyderco Shaman. Do you think uh, big, heavy Spydercos make sense? Personally, part of the reason why I'm skeptical about uh, the Shaman um, on a broader level is just the idea of hard use knives to me seems to be a contradiction in terms. You don't use a knife for hard use, you use a knife for slicing, and it seems like Spyderco, in its philosophy, seems to have gotten that more clearly than other brands. You buy a Spyderco because it's going to be slicey, because it's gonna be a knife that's actually gonna cut well, and you can even get that in their budget line again. And if you don't like it in their budget line, then you can look at some of the more expensive alternatives. Guys, if you appreciate this unadulterated, honest opinion, give me your thumbs up. I appreciate it if you like this video. I'm trying to build my knife playlist here this year. I'm definitely enjoying the knife parade coming through my door. I hope you are too. Uh, please subscribe if you're new here. And as always, thanks so much for watching.